I suspect many people with ME, CFS, fibromyalgia, long COVID related conditions are highly sensitive people. I suspect that because I've worked with a lot of people who have that quality. I was also someone who's highly sensitive and I'll talk a bit more about what I mean by that in a moment. I think that learning to navigate sensitivity without being frequently triggered is key to healing, learning to regulate the nervous system. So if you are watching live, say hi if you haven't done already. If you're watching the replay, just put hashtag replay. Your interactions help other people see the video. Do like, follow, subscribe to get notified of more content. Now I have done another video on this topic, so check out that video, uh, MECFS and strategies for the highly sensitive person. At the end, I'll tell you how you can access a free resource if you don't have it already that helps you connect to that best, best version of you. And if you want more help with this stuff that I'm talking about, I'll tell you how you can do that at the end. So let's talk about what we need. So Tonya says hi as well, can now hear. Excellent. So let's define sensitivity. Uh, a definition that I came across, high sensitivity can be defined as acute physical, mental and emotional responses to external, social, environmental, in, st internal stimuli or internal stimuli. Okay, now being sensitive has some positive aspects to it. it does mean you're attuned to others, sensitive to people's feelings, thoughtful, caring, sensitive to the needs of others. I believe it also has some negative aspects that we can be too attuned to others, too attuned, too sensitive to others' opinions and feelings, and too sensitive to the needs of others. Okay, so the question is, you know, where does this come from? How much of it is a personality trait i.e. nature, it's just the way we are, how much of it is due to nurture, due to experiences? How much of it is related to self-esteem? So there might be some overlapping issues. And in order to answer that, I have to go back to my sociology classes that I did when I was at college. Uh, you know, need to consider child development as it may give some insights into factors that might have developed these traits and what may help. So I'm going to go to my iPad and consider that core child needs are number one, to feel safe, and number two, to feel connected. And when a child experiences those things, then those feelings of safety and connection can, you know, feeling safe and connected can mean we feel loved. And that means the nervous system is regulated. That can help us develop resilience and the qualities of resilience, patience, acceptance, compassion, trust confidence, self-esteem. We have the ability to be attuned to our own emotions, thoughts, feelings, intuition. And we can develop beliefs that are supportive. There is this concept which is called being at cause. It's where we influence our experience. And I'll talk about its opposite in the moment and how that can affect us. What that means is that we can have some reference for the views of others. We have a strong enough sense of our own positive view of ourselves that we're less affected by the views, the opinions of others. And we can internalise a deep sense of self-assuredness, self-acceptance, okay? Now, when that goes wrong, if we don't feel safe, then that can result in 
dysregulation, you know, the dysregulation of our nervous system. So, for example, you know, children who grow up in war zones, they may have connection, you know, they have connection to their parents, but they experience stress because their parents are stress and dis in, in, in distress. That can result in trauma. I can't remember where I came across this, but I remember reading about the five wounds of trauma. Um, and I think it might be Barbara Brennan. And these five wounds are the following. Being abandoned. Being abused. Being betrayed. Denied, oops, and rejected. Now, any of those, you know, at either a, to a large extent or a smaller extent, can have some effect on us. So, I'd say we can experience feelings of connection, but we might might be that we don't feel safe. And that pain of separation, if there's lack of connection, can have a number of consequences. I have talked about this in previous videos, so I'll briefly cover this. But if we don't feel those feelings of safety and connection, that can result in us developing beliefs that are limiting. For instance, I'm not lovable. I'm not enough. We develop self-doubt, lack of self-esteem, lack of self-confidence. If we don't feel safe, we can develop hypervigilance. We can be at effect. So rather than at cause, so for instance, let's illustrate this. Um, okay, so let's just do some stick figures. See, I just had a, someone's made a comment. Nice handwriting. <laughs> Thank you, Rosemary. My handwriting is often appalling, so I, I really should practice using this electrical pen. Um, but let's imagine, you know, when we, we talked just earlier about being at cause. And that's, how, that's when we have a kind of strong sense of ourselves. And that means if someone else has a kind of negative opinion of us and they're throwing it over they're projecting their negativity onto that onto us it has less effect however when we are at effect it means that you know we are much more um that's a bit wonky we're much more susceptible to the opinions of others and the opinions of others can actually affect us deeply OK, we can have much more sensitivity to their opinions, their beliefs, and we internalise those feelings of, you know, I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. OK, that can result in feelings of anger, feelings of distress. We can shut down. OK, so these are all things that can happen. We get into anger into distress we get into shutdown okay that can mean we kind of shrink our nature okay we suppress our feelings and if we're suppressing our feelings then we're much more likely to to be triggered okay because those feelings are energy and that energy has to go somewhere. It gets kind of locked in our body. I'm sure we've all had the experience of being triggered by something and our muscles get tight. I was reading something earlier today that, had, that was saying that when we experience emotions that we suppress and we create tension in our body, that actually reduces the amount of oxygen that is getting to that part of the body and that can result in physical pain okay so you know we're much more 
susceptible to the kind of behaviours, beliefs, the moods of other people. So how do we shift that? So, actually, let me just pause a moment and let me find out. Let's check in what, in terms of what I've talked about so far, what resonates, what maybe doesn't resonate. Let me know in the comments. Be interesting to hear your thoughts. Also, have a quick drink of whiskey. Not really chamomile tea. So let me know, I can see quite a few people are watching. What are your thoughts about that? What's resonated so far? If I go back to the iPad. What was your you know, experience of feeling safe, feeling connected? Penny says, I find it all resonates. Excellent, you know, that's, that's good that, you know, uh, Colleen says the same. And, and here's the thing, you know, if we have that understanding uh, for me, you know, knowledge is power, can give us some insights into um, what we can do about it. And so this is interesting, didn't feel safe growing up, parents always fighting. Right, sorry to hear that. And, you know, sadly, this is common experience that even when our parents are conscientious, you know, it's it's hard for them to, you know, fully meet the needs of a child, okay? And... You know, if you're a parent yourself, maybe you kind of don't want to make the same mistakes as your parents. But, you know, inevitably, often our children still feel that maybe they didn't get everything they needed. So how do we heal this? So a key, just finding my pen. If we think about the core needs feeling safe and connected okay so we need to think about how we and those feelings of safety and connected sorry now let's start again so safe and connected Well, we first thing we've got to do is to learn to feel safe in our body. Okay? So some of you may be aware of this map that I've talked about before and showed you many times if you've watched some of my previous videos. And the notion is when we don't feel safe in our body, when we don't feel safe to feel our physical sensations and our emotions, we shut off from our body and we go to our head and create lots of thoughts and beliefs, which are often limiting. I'm not good enough, etc. as I mentioned earlier. So we need to learn to reconnect, to feel safe in our body. Again, I've made some other videos where I talk about some strategies for, to, for doing that so check out my channel if you're watching on Facebook and scroll for some of those videos and also check out my videos on uh, YouTube where I, I am creating playlists so check out the playlists I will maybe create a check uh, playlist for working with emotions working with the body so first thing we need to feel safe in our body when we do that, and we can use kind of somatic type exercises, really simple things. Uh, you know, I over the years I've collected a lot of little devices, like for instance, a uh, little roller that you roll your foot on. It's just a way of grounding your body. I think I've got it here. I've shown some of you this, this uh, contraption before which is a kind of head massage and you just put it on your head and it literally sends tingles down my spine when I do this, okay? I have no idea what it's called, but you know, if you do manage to find it on uh, Amazon or wherever, 
then feel free to let me know what it's called and I can share it with others. So there's, you know, I've got back massages. I've got um, books on massage where you just can learn simple, simple strategies for getting connected to your body. Any exercises you can do, some qigong, some yoga. These are all ways of connecting to your body. Okay, again, I have made videos where I've talked a bit about some of those techniques. Second thing is we need to feel safe to feel. Okay, and working on step one helps step two. Okay, and a strategy for that is if you do feel triggered is to just and I, I really encourage you to say this out loud. Let's say you're talking to someone and they say something that makes you feel uncomfortable. I really encourage you to kind of process what's going on on your feet. If that feels comfortable, if it feels safe, okay? You have to use your judgment. But, you know, if someone said something that made me feel uncomfortable, I know in the past what I did because I was disconnected from my body, I just suppressed it. Okay, I just suppressed my feelings. And that created lots of tension in my body. And what I could have done is just to say out loud, you know, I recognize that when you are really, I'm realizing that when you say what you've just said, I feel some sensation in my body. What do I feel? I feel uncomfortable. Okay, why do I feel uncomfortable? Well, actually, I feel uncomfortable because what you just said, you know, and then I might go into some explanation of, you know, just didn't feel okay to me when you said that thing. All right. So we can learn to, instead of just locking up that tension and ignoring it, um, and that can be a learned response because we learned not to be um, confrontational. And if you have learned that pattern, and again, put that in the chat, whether that's a pattern you recognize to, that you learn to kind of just press everything down and ignore your discomfort, um, then this is a way of starting to reverse that, okay? So being safe to feel, and then we can actually start to distinguish between our instincts and our intuition. So someone's saying, yes, uh, 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 someone says, I have that head massage tool as, as well, love it. And, and yes, I recognize that pan. Yeah, interesting. So instinct and intuition. Yeah, learned to stuff it down, not cause trouble. Yeah, yeah. And here's the thing, what's interesting is often the the perpetrator has no problem with causing a bit of trouble. Okay, consider that. You know, is this person you're dealing with someone who wouldn't bat an eyelid to push back if they felt, you know, encroached upon? Uh, my experience is, is the answer is often yes. So we need to kind of start, we can start to distinguish between our instincts. So my instinct was to push down my emotions. Um, and my intuition is telling me, actually, there's something uncomfortable about this interaction. Okay, so hopefully, does that make sense, that distinction between instinct, the thing, you know, our, our conditioned response often, our instincts can be sometimes useful, um, but sometimes our instincts encourage us to do the thing that we've always done, all right? Whereas our intuition is saying, yeah, this doesn't feel okay for me, and actually, that might give us the information we need to speak up or to take action. Um, I've talked before that when I made the decision, decision to train as a hypnotherapist coach, my instinct kicked in and said, oh, this is scary, you know, am I ready to do this? But my intuition was telling me, yeah, I need to do this, okay? Um, I remember being asked to do a, to do a song, uh, perform a song with guitar with with my uh, brother and dad and nephew, and 
in the past my instinct would have been that scary run away but my intuition just said yeah let's do it and it was you know it kind of stretched me but once I did it I was really pleased uh, that I'd done it and I was using the tools I'd learned to get my mindset right okay so we need to heal those wounds that we experienced remember we talked about you know these wounds here okay and there's kind of two schools of thoughts one is that we heal those wounds by sitting with them okay and of course uh, a prerequisite for doing that is that we need to have done these steps because if we try to sit with uh, body sensations feelings when we're not used to it then that can be overwhelming all right there's another school of thought that says actually we heal those wounds by shifting our beliefs by letting go of those limiting beliefs that we developed and creating new beliefs and when we do that we can start adopting new behaviors okay like the example i've just given instead of just internalizing your reaction starting to feel okay enough to say actually my feelings are valid i don't feel comfortable right now and i think that's reasonable okay to actually have these feelings okay and then when we do that we can actually feel safe enough to have enough love for ourselves that we're able to feel safe enough to express ourselves so let's pause there any comments questions reflections let me know in the chat otherwise as i say we'll pause there and we'll maybe do a, a quick exercise designed to help you get in touch with that best version of you some of you might be familiar with this exercise um, but let's just check if there's any comments any other reflections questions but he says fabulous insights very helpful thank you you are welcome and i'd like to know what action you might take if you look at that those five steps that we've just talked about which is the one that you think is appropriate to where you are right now and there's no judgment wherever you feel you know that would be useful for you start doing some work then feel free to share that whether you're watching live or whether you're watching the replay but maybe for now let just you can pause uh, if you're doing that just pause a moment and I invite you to close your eyes obviously only close your eyes if it's safe to do so okay and actually so Mari says four okay uh, Colleen says three heal wounds Alan says how do we change beliefs which are often mostly unconscious great question Alan so first thing we need to do is we need to we need to learn how to identify those unconscious beliefs and this map gives us some clues to that all right um so for example let's let's think if i actually an example i've been talking about a lot is um because i'm redesigning the training that i deliver um, let's say someone when they get upset they binge on biscuits so now they're caught up in this behavior okay yeah they're caught up in this behavior so they can actually start to work backwards well actually what are the feelings i'm generating that result 
in that behavior what are the thoughts beliefs and if you're not sure we can guess okay and then we can actually go back even further what are the sensations physical sensations emotions that I kind of shut down from and went to my head and again you know it's a really great question because all of this can be unconscious so there are some tools and strategies that you can learn um, I've talked about Jahari's window one of the ways in which we let's see if I can remember it become more aware okay is consider this window where there's the stuff I know about myself okay and there's the stuff I don't know about myself there's stuff that others know about me and there's stuff that others don't know Let's see if this works. Sometimes I get it the wrong way around. The stuff I know and others know about me, for instance, I'm a man. For instance, I'm a bit challenged follically. You know, that's known. There's the stuff that I know that others don't know. And they are my secrets. There's the stuff I don't know about myself, but others know. Okay? They are my blind spots. For example, sometimes I, I've watched myself doing these videos and I go, oh, I think to myself, oh, I didn't realise I did that behaviour. I didn't realise I said, you know, a lot. Um, so that was a blind spot. But one of the ways in which we can... And so this bit here is the stuff that's unconscious, okay? Stuff I don't know about me and others don't know about me. But if we you know share we don't have to share everything with others but if i share some of my vulnerabilities then then this line okay here moves in that direction and this this box gets smaller okay let's say that line we move that line to there if we allow ourselves to be open to feedback from others then this line shifts okay and then that area which is unconscious gets smaller okay so one way is to be open to feedback um, obviously one strategy one way people become more aware is they work with the therapist it helps them to become more aware of their patterns I actually you know have supervision uh, with a, a therapist and coach and I, you know I still am learning stuff um, about my patterns all right so consider that you know if you're in a kind of uh, group learning environment that is a way of getting uh, feedback and becoming having more awareness of, of those unconscious patterns because you get feedback from other people all right but we can, there are other strategies. As I say, that's a brief, I, this, this map that I showed you is a kind of brief overview of that. And, you know, I teach people how to work with this map so that they can identify unconscious patterns. Um, but great question. All right, action, working on feeling safe in the body. Excellent. All right, so let's pause there. I want to share this simple technique with you. And if you'd like a copy of it, it's called Flip the Switch. If you like a copy of it, then uh, just put Flip in the chat and you'll get a PDF and an audio where I walk you through it. But I invite you right now just to close your eyes. Again, only if it's safe. And I invite you to just breathe in, take a breath. And imagine you've got a thread at the top of your head, just straightening your posture. If you're lying down, you can just ensure that you're lying in a symmetrical way. If you're sitting, you might want to uncross your legs, just have your hands in your lap. 
just by adopting a symmetrical posture as long as that feels comfortable and when you do that you're just taking a bit of pressure off your body I remember working with a client and she always had her head to one side and I said are you aware of the fact that you're saying that you experience tension in your neck and shoulders and you're you're sitting in a kind of hunched way with your head to one side what would it be like to just sit symmetrically? And she actually said, that feels weird because she wasn't used to that. And she was used to kind of holding herself in this stress posture. So that's why it can be really useful just to adopt a symmetrical posture if that's appropriate to you. Okay. So as you breathe in, I invite you to breathe in through your nose, as long as that's comfortable, into your belly. And breathing out of your nose at a pace that's comfortable to you. As you breathe out, just ensure your out breath is a little bit longer than your in breath. And I invite you to just connect to that best version of yourself. Consider that there's a part of you that has the capacity for wisdom. There's a part of you that has the capacity for playfulness. There's a part of you that has the capacity for patience pragmatism appropriateness it's a part of you that can gauge when someone's behaving in a way that's not appropriate I worked with a few people in the last week or so where they had self-doubt in situations where someone wasn't behaving in an appropriate way. What was interesting is that their intuition was spot on, but they weren't very good at actually just accepting that they, <laughs> their intuition was giving them guidance. So having acceptance towards ourselves, knowing that in most cases our Feelings are a good guide, our emotions are a good guide of whether a boundary is being crossed. There's that part of you that has the capacity for calm, compassion, courage, trust, strength. surrender and I mean that in a positive context that ability to let go when it's appropriate to do that I'd like you to consider that that part of you that best version of you has shown up many times in your life where you were faced with a challenging situation or maybe a friend or family member was and you just responded in a resourceful way How often do you remind yourself that there is this part of you that is totally awesome? I suspect not often enough. What would it be like if you just did this exercise, maybe in a short form where you're just connected to that best version of you, just remembered all those times when you responded in a way that was resourceful and you showed up as your true, brilliant self. I invite you to connect to that part of you right now. You might give it a name. The guy who taught me this technique, Flip the Switch, a chap called Brian Johnson, calls his part Optimus. But you might call it the wise self, the whole self, the true self, authentic self, higher self, or you might just give it some name. Bob, 
Jane, whatever you want. As you connect to that part of you, I invite you just to put a smile on your face. As you breathe in and out with that smile on your face, just reflecting that you are an amazing, beautiful human being. We're just flipping that switch. And as I say, I invite you to connect to that part of you on a daily basis, should you choose. So when you're ready, I invite you to just bring yourself back. Open your eyes. And just let me how you, let me know how you found doing that exercise. I've got big shoulders, you can say what you like, you can say it was complete rubbish, or you can tell me if it was useful. How did it affect your nervous system? Do you notice that you're feeling more calm right now? If you were to score your calm score, before we did that exercise out of 10, with 10 being extremely calm, what number were you before, what number are you now? So Alan says, very relaxing. Uh, Barbara says she's going to work on safe body and flip. You are welcome. I will send you a PM with the link, Barbara, for the flip the switch exercise. And this is very useful, much calmer, grounded. Many thanks. You are welcome. Feeling calmer, says Mari. Great. So, yeah, if you're watching live or replay, if you'd like the flip the switch exercise, if you haven't got it already, it's a PDF and audio. Comment flip. Colin says, I fantastic, I practice this every morning, feel balanced and wise, excellent. And I know Colleen's created her own version of this, okay, which I love, you know, so personalise this, make it your own, add words, letters, those letters that I shared, those words I shared, I mean, spell the word PACTS, P-A-C-T-S. Barbara says, feel validated, excellent. That's what I want, okay? I want you to consider when you've done that a thousand times, okay, reminded yourself how awesome you are as a human being and the world needs you to show up as your true brilliant self, okay? Because we don't serve others when we shrink. You know, we when we indulge in other people's BS, it doesn't serve us, it doesn't serve them. So keep going, keep working on yourself. I am going to be doing, uh, starting a new Building Resilience group coaching program in mid-May. If you'd like to know more about that, just comment group in the below here. I'll send you the information. You can check it out, decide whether it's for you. If you've got any questions, feel free to get in touch. But keep going. Wishing you great health. Thanks for your comments, your interaction makes it more interesting for me um, and see you next time. Bye for now.